Yes, Lord. 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 Those folks who are called out are called out from all walks of life, from every generation and from every nation that is under the sun, to be a part of God's body. It just so happened that we have now come into a time, as I've preached before and I said, that the church has now become a system. And it has moved in many ways from the kingdom principles that God had established. You see, in life there are opposites. It's either you're right or you're wrong. It's either you're in or you're out. It's either you're up or you're down. And it's either you're for God or you're for the devil. We cannot have a middle ground. It's either or either. And the reality is, God has called a set of people who are supposed to be representing him in this last day and in this last time. As the church, we are supposed to be representing what the kingdom stands for. And the reality is we are living in a world that does not belong to God. It belongs literally to the devil. Praise God from the day that man has sinned. Praise God. The, the, the enemy has had dominion over mankind. And for those who might not understand, when we go back into the Garden of Eden, what the Lord said unto the serpent was that you shall crawl on your belly all the days of your life. And watch this. And thus shalt thou eat all thy days. Now, somebody might have missed the mystery that is in that because when the Lord said to the serpent that dust shall he eat, a few chapters before, the Bible said that God made man out of the dust of the earth and uh, the mystery in that is that man was given or the serpent was given command uh, to have dominion over mankind praise God and so when Jesus when God uh, rather wanted a people he called Abraham and he told Abraham that in thee shall all the nations of the earth be blessed and you know that God blessed him with Isaac and Isaac produced Jacob and Jacob produced 12 sons and out of that 12 sons God formed a nation the nation which is known now as a nation of Israel and God wanted his people to be different. You see, God wants his people to be separate. He wants his people to be different from every other people. And in order to separate them, it was not about their material wealth, but God wanted them to be different in every single way, shape, and form. And if we should look at all the religions, the major religions of the world, there's one thing that majority of the religions of the world have in common, and that is the fact that the God that they serve requires them to be righteous. The God that they serve requires them to be holy. There is one thing that stands out about every single worshiper and it is that their God requires 
requires them to live in a standard of holiness and righteousness. We can talk about the Muslim all you want. We can talk about the Hindus all we want and say they don't have the truth. But there's one thing that stands out about them and it is the fact that they try to live holy to please Vishnu, Rama, and Shiva. Are you with me, somebody? The reality is, right now, even in India, there are temples that they have rats. You all know rats. Yes, you all know rats. The rats that you kick out of your house and you try to poison them and try to kill them, they have temples which they host and breathe rats and worship the rats. Their temples that they go and feed rats as big as cats and dogs. Are you with me, somebody? And they try to live in a way to please these beings and these beasts. But now when we look at Israel, God said, Moses, go down to Egypt and get my people uh, under the clutches of Pharaoh. Uh, you know the story, so there's no need to go into it. Uh, and the reality is, uh, as God sent Moses down in Egypt, uh, and he brought them uh, out of Egypt into uh, the wilderness, uh, there came a time uh, when God said to Moses, uh, I want my people uh, to look different uh, and act different uh, from every other people uh, that is under the earth. Uh, and so the word said God called Moses uh, upon Mount Sinai uh, and he gave Moses uh, the Ten Commandments. Uh, he said that he wanted uh, his people uh, to be separate. Uh, and so God told them uh, some things uh, that they could eat uh, and some things uh, that they couldn't eat. Uh, can I tell somebody, uh, there ain't nothing wrong uh, with eating pork. Uh, there ain't nothing wrong uh, with eating the hog. Are you with me, somebody? Uh, but because God uh, wanted his people uh, to be separate uh, from the Gentiles, uh, he said, I don't want you to eat this. I don't want you to eat that. Because I want you to be different from the Gentiles. He said, because I want you to be different from everybody else. I want you to dress different. I want you to keep the Sabbath day. In other words, God wants there to be a separation between his people and the Gentiles. Can I talk to the church? There should be a distinction between the world and the church. Are you with somebody? There should be a difference in how a child of God walks, talks, acts, and dress. Are you with me, somebody? There should be a difference in how the child of God, his mannerism is. There's got to be a separation between the world and the church. There are those who are wanting God, but them in the dance hall. They want God, but them in the club. They want God, but them smoking. They want God, but them drinking. They want God, but them there the carnival. They want God, but them be a sumptuous. They want God. But the best thing, watch the sun, they're looking for something that is different. So when they're coming to the church, the church should offer something different, something that looks different. If anyone be in Christ, that God, he is. Uh, a new preacher. Uh, I want a few people to look this type of message. Uh, I've been preaching for the past two weeks uh, about blessing. Uh, but let me tell somebody here, uh, it doesn't matter how blessed you are. Uh, if you ain't walking right, uh, if you ain't talking right, uh, your blessing uh, is in vain. Uh, am I talking to somebody? Uh, there's got to be 
a distinction between the church there's got to be a distinction between the church and the world the church can act like the world the church can talk like the world the world is looking to the church for morals the world is looking for the church for guidance and for leadership but guess what the church gets it twisted and so now the church starts looking at the world for guidance for dress code for mannerism are you with me somebody are you with me church but I'm here to tell somebody that we've got to be different we've got to be separate I heard the word said come out from among them and be ye separate and the Lord shall receive you the world is dead and it's looking to the church for life. I heard somebody said, Be not conformed. And I preach like I feel it. Be not conformed to this world. But we've got to be transformed. There's got to be a metamorphosis. There's got to be a transition. There's got to be a change. So somebody said once I was blind, but now I can see. When you were in sin, you lived according to your flesh. You went to the dance as the flesh said you drank as the flesh said you committed fornication adultery you lie you steal and your teeth but now in Christ you got a new walk you got a new talk you got a new dress code you even get a new address if anyone be in Christ he is a new creature somebody open your mouth and give God glory there's got to be a difference with the church and the world the reality is there are many of us who will try to emphasize that God is a God who's not concerned about our physicality. The reality is we are living in the day of the customizing church. When we go to Burger King and to McDonald's, we see some uh, different menu, some things on the menu that they offer. But then we can choose to customize our package accordingly. And so in the church, we have those who want to customize the word of God to suit their lifestyle, to suit their ideology, to suit their beliefs. And can I tell them? This is one preacher where nobody can buy up with the money. My God Almighty. This is one preacher who's not impressed by anybody's money, by anybody's bank account. We've got to stand up for holiness. Is holiness our hell? Somebody open the mouth and give God glory. The reason why this friend I don't use opinion. Let me explain something to you. See, the Bible is saying that this flesh, no good thing are in there. Don't right, right. no, buy thing, say, a holy pastor, a holy brother, and body is. Very right. small. Don't no, buy thing, say, I reach me reach. It's when the reach got taken. Yeah. While I live in this earth, yeah. I will have struggles. Yeah. I will have failures. Yeah. So, the reason why they are being in opinion, watch this now. Many of you don't know this. And like this, they are all poking up. I hope you can have a punch of fridge. 
My life is what we preach. You know what I mean? Praise God back in the days. Let them know how we look at the things. First time. Let me make you understand this. Tattoo is a struggle for me. Oh, I saw now come back next Sunday. Because I want to be a tattoo preacher. Yeah. What do you think you do? Born in the 1960s. I'm born in the 1950. My struggles are real. No, I don't get a tattoo because I don't want to. I don't get a tattoo because the word of God said, do not do it. Am I talking to the church? So I don't use opinion because the opinion comes from the heart. The Bible said the heart of man. It's desperate and wicked. So when you serve God with the heart, you serve God with the mind. The Bible said that this man be in you that was in Christ Jesus. If you follow your heart, the hate people. If you follow your heart, the murder people. You have to use the mind of Christ to live in this earth. Come 
Hit to the journey so me now go backslide. Looking through the spirit on a physical eyes. Who took out me testify? Go me at the work of God and the boss. My whole life, he and us. Take me from the mood and put me in a hell. 